This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Today we're going to be learning about associated types in Swift, what they are, how to use them, and why you should care. So these are a bit of a more intermediate topic. We'll do some examples to really see what they do and get a glimpse. If that sounds good, drop a like down below, hit subscribe, and let's jump into Xcode. So we're going to be working with a playground so we can get a good handle on what these associated type things are and how to use them. So let's go ahead and go to File, New, Create a Playground. We're going to stick with the blank playground template and I'm going to go ahead and super creatively call this associated types dot playground, save it wherever you'd like. And let me just expand our window here as soon as Xcode decides to load up and we'll get into things. So an associated type, particularly with a protocol, is a form to genericize a protocol. Now what the heck does that mean? So let's do a bit of a basic example. So let's say we have a protocol called, uh, let's see, appendable. So the appendable protocol is a contract that says that anything that conforms to it has the ability to be appended to. So in other words, uh, there would be a function on here called append, and the append function would take in some type of item, let's call it a string. So let's go ahead and implement a class that conforms to this protocol. So let's say we have a class called custom array, and custom array is appendable, and respectively, we need to bring in this append function like that. So cool, looks looks pretty simple. And hypothetically, continuing with this example, let's say we have you know a private var collection, and this guy would be an array of strings. And every time this append function is called, we would say collection dot append item. So there is nothing wrong with this implementation. However, it does pigeonhole you to one thing. And that thing, in our case, is the type for the item, which we've used string. So how do we genericize this protocol such that we can specify at the conformance time what the type of item should be? So we're going to use a associated type. So we're going to go ahead and declare an associated type. And let's go ahead and call it a item. And instead of using uh, item here uh, or string here for the item parameter, we're going to go ahead and say make this item uh, uppercase I, which is our associated type. And now what you can actually see here is we can still use string and it's valid. So let's talk about what's actually going on for a second. Basically what we're saying is that this associated type item is what the append function is going to take in as an argument. And at the time of conformance, we can implicitly just put a string here and it's going to pick up that the associated type item is equal to a string in this particular case. Now you can also go ahead and let me get rid of all of this jazz down here. If you go ahead and wait for the error to pop up, it's going to say we don't conform. And if I hit fix here, the first thing it's going to say is type alias item. What is the type? And we're going to put string there. And then once again, we're going to hit the error and hit fix. And now you're going to see that. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. This is redundant. Let's go ahead and wait for it. And uh, if it gives you problems, you can just go ahead and type it out yourself. But this time in the autocomplete, you can see here that the item argument that it has autocompleted with is a string. And the way that it knows it's a string is because we've said that our associated type, which up here is declared as item, in this conformance situation is a string. And it's basically a type alias, and that's how it's determining that the parameter type of this item argument here, the parameter, is string. So let's go ahead and uh, do a couple more examples with these so we can see the actual power of this. So once again, we're going to have a private var collection, and this collection here is going to be uh, of the same type of the type alias up here. So we're going to say string. And it's going to be empty by default, just like that. And the other thing you can actually go ahead and do is even use that up here. So we could have collection, which is going to be a collection of our associated type. And we're going to say get and set. And respectively, let's see if we get an error here. All right. So it's saying this. 
doesn't need to be private because it's not going to conform. It's not going to satisfy the collection constraints. But now let's go ahead and create another class and see how we can specialize this generic associated type. So let's go ahead and say number array. And this is also, once again, going to be appendable. And the first thing it's going to yell at us about with the error here is that we need to specify the associated type alias. So we're going to go ahead and in this case, we're going to say integer, so int. The next thing we're going to want is that collection and we get it like that. And notice the autocomplete in this case is intelligent enough to uh, take the associated type item that we've defined and stick it into uh, the types. And similar for the append function also intelligently does that. We can say collection.append item. And similarly here, we're going to do collection.append item. So that is the power of associated types. It lets you genericize uh, the type of uh, parameters and even properties of so collection and append here. And you might not know, or you might know already, the standard Swift library heavily leverages associated types and protocols to build out some of the core functionality. So I tried to mimic how arrays are actually built internally. This is how sequences, arrays, sets, collections, dictionaries, these are how a lot of those data structures at the lower levels are implemented. Associated types can be really powerful. They can also get pretty complicated, so take it easy with it. Don't overdo it. And uh, yeah, let me know if you guys want to see more associated type related videos. Pretty quick overview. If you haven't done so already, drop a like down below. Hit subscribe if you're into iOS and want to stick around. Don't hesitate to leave any comments with any questions. And if you would like the source code, I just set up a Patreon linked down below. So definitely go and check that out if you're into it. Helps support the channel. Helps us go in and grow. And so thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.